Hello! Welcome back to Anita's YouTube channel. Today we'll be working on BC 2021 free response question number six. And we'll be trying to figure out how the College Board will score each point, each question. So first of all, we have to do some creations on a McLaurin series, which is really fun. The McLaurin series is n to the zero to infinity, negative one to the nth power, x to the nth power, over 2 times e to the n plus 3. So we're going to be working on some operations with that. First of all, A asks us to state the conditions necessary to use the integral test to determine the convergence of the series of n to the n is equal to 0 summation infinity 1 over e to the n power. So remember, in order to do an integral test, the series, or I mean, the series has to be con decreasing, continuous, and larger than 0 as if it's turned into an integral. Continuous and larger than zero. And it's pretty apparent that this series has all of it. So the series meets all the requirements. And the second part asks us to use the integral test to show that this series converges. So in order to do the integral test, we have to turn this thing into an integral, which is fairly easy, but then remember we have to write it as the limit notation. So we're going to do limit as n approaches infinity, and the bounds will be zero, so it's zero at the bottom to n, and we're going to be doing, since I'm just going to rewrite this as each, this thing as this. So we're integrating on the every bits of let's say x. So we're going to be doing e to the negative x dx. We're integrating the bits of dx. So we can rewrite it. Remember the integral of e to the negative x is simply just negative e to the negative x because e to the x is e to the x. So with the chain rule, we'll get a negative sign front when the x is negative x. So we'll be doing the integral of, why did I just rewrite the thing? So we're just going to be doing negative e to negative x from limit as n approaches infinity, n to zero. So if we plug in n, for this equation, it's going to be negative e to the negative x minus negative e, negative e to the negative n minus negative e to the zeroth power. Negative zero is just zero. So if we plug in, let's say, infinity and then e, negative e to the ne zero is simply just negative one, we're going to be getting a really, really small negative number because this thing can be rewritten as this thing. And we know that this approaches zero. So as the limit of n goes to infinity, we know that this thing is going to zero. So we're left with minus negative one, which is simply just one. Integral test shows that the series converge because the series goes to a specific number. And based on my guess, I am going to say that the College Boards definitely give us a point for stating the necessary conditions for the integral test. And second of all, turning the summation into integral. Because that's how we do an integral test. You cannot just straightly work on an integral test with a summation sign. And third of all, computes the integral and state that since it goes to a specific number, it will be convergent. Clarifies. That's how I put it. That's the three points that allot to this point, to this question. Number B asks us to use the limit comparison test with the series n is equal to zero to infinity one over e to the nth power to show that g of one blah 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 converges absolutely. Great. So well, let's just do it. It's okay, I have, I have some space at the bottom, so I'm just going to be working on this. 
So remember, we're using the limit comparison, so we're comparing the two limits together, and we're trying to get that g of 1, which is this ratio, is convergent. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, we have to turn this thing. Since we're asking for the limit, we're finding the ratio of the two series. And if the ratio is a finite number, we all know that the series converge because we know that this series converge. And if this series to this series has a specific ratio, we'll know that both series converge. So first of all, we have to find the absolute value of g of, x, g of 1. Since we know that g of, g of 1 is actually a Maclaurin series that is alternating, the absolute value of it would just be the absolute value of the series, which would just be this. And we found this. Since we have to do the ratio for the two series in order to do the limit comparison, we're trying to find as the series both go to really, really large numbers, will there be a specific ratio or a specific relationship between the two series? So I'm just going to write this. Well, it doesn't matter if you put the top, if you put this series on the top or the bottom, because we just care about the ratio as if, as if it's a finite number. And if we put it at the top, if the ratio might be larger, and if we put it at the bottom, the ratio might be smaller, but that's totally fine. So we're going to be doing, I'm, I'm just going to put the original series on the top over the series, which will be and if we flip it, well, if you divide a number, you're going to multiply by its reciprocal so it's going to be times. So this whole thing becomes 2en plus 3 over e to the nth. But remember, we have to write the limit as an approaches infinity because if we operate with really small numbers, we're not going to get a ratio that's reflective of the relationships between the two series. So as n approaches infinity, we know that 3 can be neglected because it's just simply too small compared to e to the infinity so we're going to be getting e to the nth power to e to the nth power divided by e to the nth power which is 2 and that is indeed a finite number what am i writing so we're going to state that because the ratio is a finite number the series converges by absolutely by the limit comparison test. I'm just simplifying here. So, and we're all set with B. So my guess for this question is that they will give us a point for finding the limit for comparison test, which is simply the limit as an approach is infinity of the two ratios, and then second of all, compute, computation, the limit, computation of the limit. Oops. Okay, so we're all set with B. C asks us to determine the radius of convergence of the Maclaurin series for G. I'm just going to be copying the series for g. g of x is equal to infinity, negative 1. So, right now we're in our heads thinking about what is the limit, what is, how do we determine the radius of convergence? So we know that in order for something to converge, the next term has to be smaller than the previous term or else the series would go boom go really really large so now we have to think about finding the relationship between the next term and the previous term and well if 
the next term is going to be smaller, then that means the ratio of it to the previous term has to be smaller than 1. So we ultimately would get a solution for the limit comparison test that we're going to do this. When I mean a n plus 1 and a n, I'm referring to the terms. So a n plus 1 is the next term, while a n is the previous term. We'll get, so, well, let's just plug in some things and test it out. Since we know that it's an alternating series, let's just work with the absolute value at the very end. So we're going to get... This is a n plus 1 divided by a n. Because I know it's going to be fractional, I'll just write it as a division sign. Well, as I said, we divide a number, we're multiplying its reciprocal. So, times 2e to the nth power plus 3. Nothing scary here, simply algebra. Okay, and we know that, so now we're going to do some cancellations. It's super fun and super satisfying. We have to care about this part. As limit as an approach is infinity, which means any finite number such as 3 is going to be negligible. It's canceling this out. Negative a to the nth power divided by a to the nth power and simply a to the n minus m. So we know that negative 1 n plus 1 divided by negative 1 to the nth power is simply just negative 1 to the first power, which is negative 1. We don't even need to write it here because we are already evaluating it at a very large number by canceling out the 3. So negative 1 goes to the top. And then where we're left is we're left with x, x to the n power. n plus 1 divided by x to the n power. And that is simply just going to be x. So x also goes to the top. And then we also have 2e to the n plus 1. 2e to the nth power divided by t to the n plus 1 power. These cancel out, and we're left with 1 over e to the first power, which is simply 1 over e. And this goes to the bottom. And remember, we're setting the whole thing having a ratio that is smaller than 1. So the whole thing is smaller than 1. So, if we take out the absolute value sign, the negative 1 is just going to be 1, but x needs to retain its absolute value because we have no idea about the positivity or negativity of the number. So I'm just going to write absolute value of x divided by e is smaller than 1, which makes e the radius of convergence. You might be wondering now what we're going to do next. Are we going to test the endpoints? But my answer is no, we don't have to do that. If the question asks you, from my experiences as a Calc student, you got to read the question carefully or, or else you're going to do extra work and that's just not going to be pleasant, especially plugging in the endpoints. It can get ugly sometimes. So if the question asks you to find the interval of convergence, then you will need to test the endpoints. But it's just simply asking us to find the radius of convergence, and we don't need to test the endpoints. I was really happy when I realized this as I was looking through the historical solutions to the to Maclaurin series problems, and just a small discovery. Okay, we're left with one more. Before we do that, we're going to be figuring out how the college board award us for the points. So my bold guess is, or do we write C? 
One point for finding the ratio of consecutive terms, which I meant is limit as it approaches infinity, an plus one over an. And one point for computing the ratio, I mean the radius of convergence. Okay, so because you see this problem only has nine points, I, I'm i pretty sure that this problem will have more, but the College of Royal assigns nine points to it, so I guess we have to be really fugal, fugal in allotting the points. So D asks us to find the first two terms of the series, G of one is equal to the summation of n is equal to zero to infinity of negative one to the nth power over t to the n power plus three. And we're using that to approximate g of one. Use the alternating series error bound to determine upper bound on the error of approximation. Gotcha. Well, error bounds are a scary thing, but if it's the alternating error bounds, we are just doing the third term as the error of approximation because alternating series is going to eventually approach in zero and it's going to decrease if it's a convergent series. So we are pretty sure that the error for the next term is going to be smaller than the error for the series is going to be smaller than the next term. For example, if we do like, I don't know, let's say if we do 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus 0.5, I mean, okay, since it's an alternating series, I'm just making this up on top of my head. 4 minus 2 plus 1 minus 0.5 plus point, I don't know, 0.25 minus 0.125. So if we want to approximate out with the first two terms, we're definitely going to get an error that is smaller than 1 because minus 0.5 is the next term, and that's going to decrease the error of approximation. So no matter how far it goes, the error for the approximation is always going to be smaller than 1. And let's work on this. It doesn't ask us to find the first two terms of the series, so I'm not going to bother with that. But in my answer key, I did find it, just in case. So we're just going to be finding the error for the third, for our second, second term approximation. So we're doing the third non-zero term, which is going to, I'm going to write it as A3. And that is going to be equal to, well, n to the 0 is the first term, n to the 1 is the second term, n to the 3rd will be the third term, One to the n to the 2 is going to be the third term. So negative 1, 2, divided by 2, e, 2, plus 3. That is going to give us 1 over 2, e, 2, plus 3. And I am going to write this is going to be the upper bound of the error of approximation. And I have to also state that the series for G1 is an alternating series, as we discussed already, whose terms, let's say, decrease to zero in magnitude, because when we're, we're talking about the magnitude. Therefore, the magnitude of the maximum error of approximation is less than the next term. Error of approximation, my handwriting is flying, is less than 
the next term, which is a3. And as we, as we already got, 1 over 2 to the second, 2 times e to the second power plus 3. So that is going to be the error. And I would say the two, the two points that are going to be distributed for this question is going to be using upper bound on error of approximation and explaining error of, of approximation for alternating series. And I think we're all set. That is it for today. We have done a really challenging problem, but if you really take a look at it, it's not even that bad. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you for listening.